subscribe and ring the bell to never miss an update. It was wonderful visiting with you on the live stream and catching up with others on the replay. Today on Lady Mary Beth, I will address the unanswered question from the live. It's a bit about me, table talk, and thrifting. Well, this was my very first live stream and I know that I missed some really important questions. The chat box was rather small on my screen. I probably should have worn my reading glasses and I was chatting with you and missing some really good questions. So I wanted to respond to you today and answer anything that you might have wondered about me. You've probably already heard enough about me, but there were some questions that I did want to answer. What state are you originally from? And of course, I live in the United States. I'm from Texas, and I'm a very proud seventh generation Texan. And are you originally from Houston? Yes and no. I moved here at three weeks of age from a small town in South Texas, and I moved away again, lived in another small town, and came back in the fifth grade. So I've had the best of both worlds with a small town and a big city. And please tell us your ties to Germany as you have traveled there a lot. And that kind of goes with another question of where did you meet your husband? My husband is German, and that is the connection to Germany. I met him when I was 14 years old, a freshman in high school, and a group from his high school in Germany came over on the GAP Exchange Program, which is the German-American Partnership Program, sponsored by the U.S. State Department and the German Foreign Office to foster relations. And he stayed with our neighbors and friends two doors down, and that is how I started going to Germany to visit him and his family. And the viewer is wondering how I began my collections with Villar and Bach. And it was that very first summer when I was 14 that I went to the factory store. It's only a 25 minute drive from my husband's village. And I do remember selecting some very special pieces and I am still drawn to it. And a viewer inquires about the pronunciation of her last name. Her husband is of German ancestry and she writes, my husband's last name is Raab, R-A-A-P. And they are from Dingodun, Germany. Would you tell me how that would sound spoken in German? And it is a soft R and the two A's elongate the vowel and it is pronounced Rap. And finally, do you have any antique pieces that were passed down? And if so, what is your favorite piece? I don't have that many antique furnishings from the family. My father does have some of those pieces, but I have my mother's English barley twist tea cabinet. And I featured that in the very first teacup episode and you will learn more about it and the interesting story of how it suddenly appeared on my doorstep in a wooden crate airmail. That is a really neat one and I treasure that. And now we'll talk a little bit about the tabletop. You know, I love to talk about table settings and tabletop and a viewer asked, which casserole dishes look good with china? I would suggest that you go with a basic white. It can even be a porcelain, a baker, oval serving piece, for example, or a silver plate, chafing dish, or covered casserole. I use Villarine Bach bakeware, and I go with the solid white so that it matches every pattern and you can dress it up or down. So it's very versatile. And which basics should we own to make a nice table? I suggest start with a white tablecloth and napkins. That's just standard and then have some showstopper napkins. It could be something inexpensive from World Market that has a nice print to it or an affordable color, maybe in your favorite color. And then you'll want to have a good quality stainless steel flatware and of course stemware. And I would go with clear to match with any look. And vintage is a really good idea too, if you're wanting something unique. And a lot of vintage pieces are dishwasher safe. The glasses that we use every day are over a hundred years old and we do put them in the dishwasher and they are quite nice. They're etched and don't forget the pitcher. That's something really important too, because you will want to be serving a beverage. And what is your favorite China pattern? Well, I can't believe I missed that question. And of course that's tough for me because I have so many different dish patterns that I just adore, but I have to say Wedgwood crown gold and the Wedgwood Walt strawberry are probably my favorites. 
because it reminds me of my bridal registry and that really special time in my life and all the showers that friends hosted. And I like the crown gold because it does go with so many different looks. And I have featured this once, I think, in a segment on the Pantone Blue Color of the Year for 2020. And I think it just has a really regal look. It was made in platinum as well. I just have one piece in that. So the crown gold would be my favorite china pattern. And I really do enjoy the wild strawberry as well. I think that that is a lot of fun. And I should do a table with this. That's really pretty. And where do you usually buy your tabletop flowers? It really depends on the scope of my event. If I'm just having guests for dinner, I might grab something at my grocery store and create my own arrangement. I don't usually buy things that are already arranged because it's a lot more expensive, especially at the grocery store. And if I am planning a big event where I am arranging the flowers, then I make sure that I order those ahead of time at Costco. And sometimes you can just pop in and get whatever you might need. And one tip, if you have a Costco near you, is to inquire about their floral vendor. If you get their business card, which they will gladly give you, you can call that flower company ahead of time and let them know what you're looking for and they will arrange for it to be delivered to your Costco store and it's very affordable there. And when I have large events, especially if it's at a location, I bring my vessels to my local florist, whether it's a teapot, teacup, or a beautiful vase, or even a bowl. And I bring them a napkin, maybe a ribbon that I'm using for the event, a copy of the invitation. And that way the florist can design the flowers to go with my event. And that's very helpful. So I guess the answer is I go many places for flowers. Would love to see your ideas for using crystal when you have little space to store it. I would suggest going back and viewing my repurposed vintage finds video. That's something that I did early on in my channel. And there are lots of multi-purpose uses for vintage items. And I even use a rose bowl for my toothbrush holder. I know that sounds a bit odd. Most people don't believe me, but it's really true. And that way, if I needed an extra rose bowl, I can just clean it and use it for a purposeful occasion. Do you know the history behind Haviland, New York. That is a China manufacturer. Sometimes if you're at a thrift store or antique shop and you turn over the plate, you see maybe Theodore Haviland or Haviland, New York. And I think that a segment might be coming on that. I happen to know a lot about Haviland and I do have some Theodore Haviland as well. It's a company that started in the 1800s by David Haviland in New York City, and he had a china shop, and his patrons were the elite of New York City. Probably my grandmother's family shopped with him. And he imported his wares from England. But the interesting thing is, one day a customer came in with a broken teacup and asked him to source it so that they could replace it in their service. And he traveled to Europe trying to find where this was made because it was such a fine quality. And that took him back to Limoges, France. And his family eventually opened up a factory in Limoges and created a whole new way to decorate China that has changed the industry today. Great question. And I do think that I will feature that in the future. Um, another viewer wrote, we have Haviland Lusterware in orange. What recommendations do you have to incorporate this with a modern pattern? Uh, that is really neat. I like the sheen to the Lusterware. I think that, that really adds some interest to your table. And I would suggest to go with a cream or a white dish pattern, and that way you can be versatile. And with that color, you can add seasonal touches perhaps a fall patterned napkin, or in the summertime, you could definitely add some vibrant colors. I think that that actually lends itself to a very fun table setting. And these are all the wonderful questions on tabletop that I didn't get to answer. We all love thrifting, and there is one question that I didn't get back to in the live stream. What is your best thrifted piece purchased this year? It is a 30 inch Waterford crystal lamp that graces my living room. It is exquisite. And I got it at the Bluebird Circle recently. I featured it in an episode. I paid $150. And if that were new, it would probably be 750 or more. And I've not seen that in the Waterford lighting wear assortment. It may have been a special collector's edition. It is in perfect condition and I absolutely love it. Now that Nicoletti's is long gone, where do you find new lampshades? 
Nicoletti's is a lightingware store in Houston, Texas. It is no more, but it started in the 1960s. And in the 90s, I actually worked with Mrs. Nicoletti when I was with Waterford Crystal. And it was a very old world store, 22,000 square feet. And they carried Waterford chandeliers and lamps amongst other brands. And it was a great source for lampshades, of course. And what I do today, if I'm needing to replace one, is I go to a charity resale. Sometimes they will have an assortment of just lampshades. And if I know I'm headed that way, I will take my lamp, wrap it in a blanket, put it in the car, and that way if I find a shade I think might work, I will bring my lamp in to try it out. Is it painful to sell thrifted items on eBay or do you see it as an opportunity to buy bigger and better antiques? Well, actually, sometimes it can be painful. I've sold some things that I very much regret. Just a few days ago, I listed a Noritake hand-painted vase from the 1950s. I found it for $10 at upscale resale in the Dallas area, and I listed it for a little over $50. It sold immediately, and the buyer is from Asia. I sent it on to the Pacific Northwest for someone to reship it on to Asia. And I'm sure they will sell it for hundreds of dollars, if not more, and I do regret that, but it's okay, I can't keep it all. And I did have a private gift show last fall, and I featured a beautiful table setting with china, and all the items on the table were for sale, and I included some vintage candle holders that I had purchased at the Bluebird Circle, because it just went so well together, and I wanted to see the table complete. And as soon as they sold, I regretted it. So I went on eBay, paid even more money to get them back. Of course, not the exact same pair, but the same style. And one viewer had messaged, thanks for all your tips on Shop Goodwill. It's been such a help. And that's a really neat online shopping site if you live in the United States or Canada. You can shop bargains from your home, and I have quite a few segments that I featured on my channel on how to approach the Goodwill shopping online. And just yesterday, I got a tulipier, which is another item on my bucket list, a really large one, and I got it for a pretty good deal. So that's a great way to shop. And since watching Lady Mary Beth segments, I've learned to use my Waterford Crystal 10-inch bowl as a floral centerpiece, as well as the more traditional uses. And that's really a great idea. Perhaps that was a thrifted find. And you can float candles and flowers in the water. You can actually put oasis inside and build a beautiful tall centerpiece or take it to your florist and they can make something really pretty for you. And I think that bowls are the most versatile vessel. It makes a really good wedding gift as well. So that's something to keep in mind. And we all love a good thrift find. Many of you asked during the live about estate sales and how to find them and what time to show up. Always get there early and to find them, I would suggest that you go to estatesales.net, type in your zip code, and then you can discover the ones in your area and even preview pictures of the items that they have for sale. And I didn't film this, so I wanted to bring this to you. This is a Limoges bowl. I call it a boat bowl because of the shape. It has lots of great detailing and a gold rim and a beautiful Haviland Limoges back stamp. And I can imagine this to be used for soaps in the bathroom, maybe a jewelry dish, or to place candies in on a side table. This sweet basket is from Bavaria, and it was also a deal. This was half price day, so this was $1.50. The Limoges was $5. It makes a great gift too. You could fill it with chocolates and give it to a friend. And these Herod's teacups with the cobalt and gold rim were half price. They were $1.50 each, and I've seen them on eBay for about $35 a piece. And someone had to pack these in their suitcase and bring them back home, and that saved me a lot of time and money. This planter is from Portugal, and it has a Bernardo back stamp on it. And the lady of the house was an antique dealer, and I know this because I had previously been to a garage sale at that address that I did feature in my on my channel and it has a price tag of $49 on it. So I think the $6 was a really good deal. And I plan to place orchids inside with sheet moss and make that a beautiful centerpiece. This is an example of some estate sale finds that might be in your area. 
Thanks again for joining me in the live stream and watching the replay. I really appreciate that. Thanks to all my viewers. It was a great experience and I hope to bring you another live at some point in the near future. And I hope that you elevate your everyday with beautiful things and thrifted finds.